Welcome to Biomutant. Before we get into any of this review, I have to give a massive thank you to THQ Nordic for hitting me up with a code. I have had this game since the 6th of May. This is the big project I've been telling people about. I have been working all day every day on this stuff. The other content on the channel hasn't been as good as I would have personally liked it to be, just because I put so much time into playing this game. Literally, when I can, or like when I've been able to, I've been putting like 8 to 12 hours a day into this game. So, there are plenty of tips coming up for this game. I have already prepared 9 separate tips videos, and then 7 hours after you guys see this, there will be a big video coming with a massive bunch of like general tips for the game. The separate videos are very short, they're around like 2 minutes each, there might be 1 or 2 that have like 5 minutes of length, but that's because... The stuff to do is a lot tougher. It takes a lot longer. So if you are in any way interested in Biomutant, make sure you sub to the channel, turn notifications on, as the separate tips videos are for the coolest and the hardest stuff in the game. Before we jump into the positives, and trust me, there are a lot of positives in this game, we're going to go through the negatives, and there aren't that many. So the very first thing is, Pete has had puzzles turning the wrong dials, and like there's a lot of puzzles in the game. And some of them have been turning wrong, but simply restarting the game will fix it. Me and Pete both got dashboarded, but it was only small encounters. Like, I think it was one dashboard each, after hours and hours of playtime. There are things in the game called hall spots for some different tech that you get to use, and the hall spots just don't seem to be showing up. There is no ability to place a waypoint wherever you want to on the map. You can only waypoint quest objective areas. And several side quests don't work properly. They won't show you locations on the map. They require scouting the entire map and stuff. And there's just issues because Pete had to go and take down Locust Captains. And for some reason there were three different quests that were leading him to the same area. Although he had already taken down that captain. Frame drops even on the Series X have happened a couple of times. Although they have quickly fixed themselves and they haven't lasted too long. So, now we're going to go on to the positives and the main part of the review. Bear in mind, there are no spoilers. I'm not going to spoil the story. What I do with my reviews is I review the gameplay aspect. So, some games I won't even complete. I haven't actually fully completed Biomutant, but I've put a lot of hours into it. I mainly just play the games to see the gameplay, how it plays out, like the cycle of what happens in the game. Is it repetitive? All that sort of stuff to put a value on... Is it worth the money you're going to be spending on the game? I totally recommend 100% that you pick this game up. If you like any form of RPG, looting, shooting, crazy weapon combinations and stuff, I strongly recommend you get this game. So, the game is estimated to last around 12 to 15 hours. That is if you are rushing through the game. It entirely depends on what you are doing, because if you go for a full-on exploration and side quest based run, it can last you upwards of 65 hours. I have put about, I'm going to say one day, 10 hours into the game. Barely touched the story. And the reason I've stopped playing the story and done this review now is not just because I don't cover stories, I just do the gameplay side of things. But for me, it feels as though the story is going to be at least similar to what you're going to experience through side quests, but just with a story behind it. Maybe some different gadgets and weapons and stuff. But most of my playtime has been side quests. I've been exploring the entire world. And I feel that I have explored and adventured through enough of the game to give you a valued opinion on this game. So, when you first start, you create your character. There is a lot of depth in the character creation. You choose, like, your class and you have all these different points, like your intellect sort of thing, your agility... You can even barter with some of the characters in the game. There is a lot to the character creation. You even choose the colour of your character. When you start, there will be three difficulties to choose from. And then you can also choose to go the light route or the dark route. So whichever you choose, in-game choices will shift to either side being good or bad. And each of them will come with their own psionic mutations, which is pretty much the only thing that actually changes. Because whether you choose light or dark you're still going to encounter the same enemies, most of the game will still be the same, it will just be 
your different psionic mutations. There'll be a couple of things that change, but it's not a drastic change. Obviously, your game choices, in-game choices, will be different. Instead of keeping a creature, you'll decide to kill it if you're playing dark. So carefully choose which side you want to go to. You can switch whenever you fancy. You don't have to be locked into one. I actually chose to start on the dark route. And then I loved the look of the creatures, didn't want to kill them, so I ended up saving them all, and eventually I turned into a character with maximum light. The game, as I said, has a lot of puzzles. There is loads of exploration for mods and different things in the game, like loot and weapons. Lots and lots of stuff to do in this game. There are even puzzles to progress through certain areas. The art style is amazing for this game. The game looks really good. The music soundtrack is so nice and chill, it's just relaxing to sit there and just play this game. There is a level system, there are perks, there are upgrades, there are mutations, there is a lot of stuff to boost your character and be as badass as you want, including combos for your special attacks and stuff. And this is one of those games, it's single player, there's no server issues and stuff like that. You actually get to feel powerful. I don't think it's gonna be a game where they're gonna be putting out patches for nerfs and stuff. In my personal opinion, I'm very happy with where this game is. I don't think it needs Anything besides maybe a couple of bug fixes, although all the bugs I've encountered are side quests, so they're not going to ruin your game experience as such. It's not like it's a main quest blocking progression. There are lots of little funny things in the dialogue, along with options. Things like a character being in a wheelchair and he's called out of date, yet there was a time in his life where he wasn't in a wheelchair and he was called best before. Another thing is your mum is called Mooma, your dad is called Popsy. It is very sort of childish, funny, sort of humorous dialogue. And I don't see a problem with that at all. There's been several times where I've sat there and had a little laugh at the things that have been said in the game. But there is also, if you want to, options in the settings for you to turn down the amount of gibberish that's spoken in the game. You can even decrease the amount of narration if you want to, or increase it entirely up to you. There are six different tribes in the game, three for each light and dark, somewhat on one side, on one side or maximum on one side. So you start off with just a small amount of light and then as you progress, you're just light and then you go to maximum or the other for dark. At the start, you will get a choice of talking to the Jagni or the Myriad tribe based on your choice of being good or evil. Myriad are good, Jagni are bad. Once you choose a tribe to ally with, you will discover outposts that you'll need to take control of. Basically, as you're capturing the outposts, more of the map becomes friendly and more of that tribe you push back, like your enemy tribe. There are several different types of vendors in the game that will help you get the missing pieces for certain weapons. You use a currency called green and you can also sell things to these vendors. There are vendors for armor, weapons, there are even vendors for buying mounts. There is also crafting and the crafting goes very in-depth as well. You can even create your own weapons if you want to, and you can add things onto gear to give them a stronger armor rating. So, for an example, Pete decided to put a valve on his knee. So it was on his legs and it would increase his armor rating. There's a lot of funky little sort of bits of loot you can pick up in the game. And the crafting goes very, very in-depth to the point where you can change the base type of both your ranged and melee weapons. You can put a thing on called a top mod, so it'll sit on top of the gun and there's like weird heads that you can put on there. There are different modules and stuff in the game that will give you like radioactive bullets for a mag, you'll get like heat bullets for a mag, so there's loads of different elements and stuff in the game too. But the crafting, you can change the magazines, you can have like drum mags, extended clips, they will change all your damage rating, your reload speed, your crit chance, your fire rate, your accuracy... There is a lot of stuff to do with the crafting in this game. You can, in the game, obtain suits because there are different areas of the game like radioactive, heat zones. There will also be zones that will take your oxygen. You can obtain suits that will increase your resistance against them. Once you have one of the suits, if you equip all those pieces of gear, you will be fully resistant. You can explore those areas as much as you want. And there is also a system in the game that once you've obtained a suit, it will stop you being able to scrap it. So when you, if you accidentally click to scrap, then there will be a little sound. It won't pop up, would you like to scrap this and get these resources? Because you can't actually scrap them, which I think is really good. Although with the scrapping, be careful, because whatever you have equipped on your character, you can accidentally scrap it. 
The game world is big, it's beautiful, there's enemies in the open world, there's a lot of stuff to do, different biomes, weather effects and stuff, and it looks good. When it's raining, it kind of changes to a, a more like doom and gloom sort of atmosphere, and I think they've done amazing with how this game looks. As I've said, there are mounts in the game which will give you the ability to move around quicker and explore the game world more efficiently. There are lots of different mounts in the game. I'm not going to tell you, like, all of them. There's basically, you have some for water, some for land. There are some that will help you with jumping off high sort of cliffs and mountains and stuff. Another thing I love about this game is when you're doing a side quest. For an example, completing toilet puzzles. The game will point you to the next part of the quest, so you don't actually have to explore to find them. When I say a toilet puzzle, you'll basically have to turn these dials in order to make them all match so that you fix the toilet. There are lots of different things with side quests like that in the game. You have phones, you have toilets, you have radios, you have TVs, you have arcade machines. There are lots. There are also a lot of gadgets and cool little toys and stuff that you can use in the game. There are big, and I mean big, like gigantic bosses. And if you work with the crafting, you get your weapons up to par with your level and everything, you will feel powerful. If you decide to play this game and you start with the side quests and then move on to the main quests of the game, the enemies will actually level up with you. So if you spend 24 hours doing side quests, then you go and do a part of the story. If you're level 24 and it's a part early on in the story, the enemies will be around level 24 as well. You need to be careful though, because there will be some enemies in the game that are a few levels lower than you. There'll be some that are your level. And then there will also be some that have a skull next to them, and they are incredibly powerful. They pretty much like two or three tap you. So on the gameplay side of things, how it looks, how it feels to play, all that sort of stuff, that is pretty much it. I recorded... I was trying to stick to roughly like hour-long recordings for this review. A couple of them would have taken a little bit longer. But I only really found stuff to talk about for the review from the first four parts of my recording. I have tips all the way up until like part nine. And then there are just a lot of videos where I didn't feel there were any useful tips or any parts I could add in for the review. So those bits of footage got deleted. But as I said, I 100% recommend you pick this game up. It is totally worth every penny you will spend on it as long as you like the look of this game. However, there were some negatives. There are some issues in the game. I'm not saying the game is perfect. But there is nothing that will ruin your experience to the point of getting you stuck or things breaking and stuff like that. Also, there are areas in the game, like every single different place you go to is like an area. They've all got their own like little zones and their like town names and stuff. There are area objectives that you can do, like finding all of the old world gadgets, all of the superb loot. There are different types of quests that will give you different rewards. Some will be XP, some will be nothing, some will be really powerful gear that you can use. But that is pretty much it from me. As I said, I'm about like 30 hours into the game and I still have a hell of a lot to do. So it's a very, very big game. I feel if you're taking your time exploring, doing all of that stuff, I believe you can actually go way more than 65 hours in. However, some of it at some point will start to feel repetitive just based on having to go and do puzzles to fix phones and toilets and stuff. It does get a little bit repetitive. And there are some like side quests that will take you an incredible amount of time. And then others will be done in 10-15 minutes. It depends on how you approach it. And an example of that, one quest took me two and a half hours. So what we're going to do is leave the video there. That is my Is It Worth The Money review for Biomutant. Totally recommend the game. Pick it up and let me know what you think in the comments. But that's going to do it from me. I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it.